up my ninjas I'm Strident and I'm back with another action figure review it's kind of late so pardon my voice but uh, we're reviewing uh, Kamen Rider Zolda from Kamen Rider Dragon Knight or Kamen Rider Ryuki if you've seen the Japanese version this is a Kamen Rider that uh, I've liked I've always dug the design I saw him in the SIC version first which was way more um, exaggerated all the weaponry is really exaggerated so I thought that's what he really looked like but you know now that I have the SH figure arts version I can see that's not at all you know 100% accurate but I mean as you can see from these pictures I mean the amount of detail this guy has and even some of his accessories are pretty amazing so you guys are going to be in for a little treat, SH Figure Arts uh, or uh, Bandai Spared No Expense. Um, this is one of those uh, <laughs> reasons for sticking with this line. Um, we always make the joke that this guy is Agent O underneath all that gear because in most games he picks the biggest weapon and just bombards whatever it is he's fighting. So. <laughs> My son refers to him, my uh, little Strider refers to him as Uncle Uncle uh, H. No. <laughs> but anyway, let's get into the review. Sculpt and paint. It's an SH figure arts. <laughs> I almost don't feel like I need to go into it, but for those of you who might be brand new to this whole import toy thing or SH figure arts versus you know anything else these are easily the best you know if you're looking for show or movie accurate figures or actually in some cases video game accurate figures sh figure arts is where you want to look figma comes pretty close but sh figure arts they take the whole engineering thing to the next level so your paint will be top notch your accessory count usually is top notch and the actual design of the character will look exactly like what you saw in the film, video game, anime, tokusatsu, whatever. It's That's just the way they do. Um, I dig the Kamen Riders, and I've said this in other videos, because things that, that you, design-wise, there are so many things that you see on a Kamen Rider that you don't typically see on your typical Sentai figures or your anime figures, you know, all the compound parts, you know, um, like those yellow lights, um, the amount of detail that goes into like, you know, a helmet or armor or even the weapons. You see it sometimes in anime figures, but you don't necessarily see it so much on your uh, tokusatsu figures. So it, it it's, uh, or I'm sorry, your your Sentai figures. You definitely don't see this shit on American figures, you know? McFarlane and NECA tend to put a lot of detail, but it's not always functional detail. This is where it all comes together, and it's just amazing. I mean, every piece of this sculpt works with the articulation and everything else of the figure. Um, you know, looking at the figure, you think up top, he would be restricted a lot, and he's not restricted. I mean, there's so many little details, and just putting him in motion, it really brings the figure to life and really shows you how well uh, constructed and engineered this figure actually is. I was surprised, you know, to some degree. I've come to expect it from them, which is why I collect them. But uh, I was pretty surprised because I was thinking there's got to be some area where this guy falls short. But he's more poseable than some of my SH figure arts that are uh, Sentai based characters, you know, like Red Buster, who has nothing actually physically should be in the way of his arms to prevent him from putting them close together so he could hold a gun with two hands. Um, he can barely do that. But this guy, even with those giant shoulder pads, masterfully engineered. And it's, it's something you hear me talk about a lot, and it's a complaint that I have with uh, Marvel Legends because they, they don't have that much detail on them, and they could be engineered a lot better, especially figures that we're getting for, like, the second or third time between, you know, Hasbro and Toy Biz, and uh, you don't get it. But the prices are still going up. But you look at this dude, and every weapon, every little piece, everything, and Figma makes one, too, and 
to some degree, if you have the two standing side by side and they're in like cool poses, it's hard to tell which one is which. There are little things that give it away, but I mean, look, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's just, man, I don't know how else to describe it. It's just, these guys are a sight to behold. It's, um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It, these figures are usually so good that it's difficult for me to elaborate on things because it's usually really straightforward. Like, look, <laughs> the, the gun is huge. The gun is bigger than the figure and he can hold it with no problem. It doesn't throw his weight off or anything like that. Just looking at the armor on the figure, you just see rivets and bolts and uh, layering and, 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 you know, detail on all angles. And it's just, it's just all good. It, it, I mean, it, and it's all stuff that, like I said, it's there on the actual character. So, uh, you know, in the, uh, the TV show. So I just don't know why anybody or how anybody could not respect or like these figures. If you are collecting them, they put everything else to shame, just about, you know, more detail, better detail, freaking art uh, when i get to the articulation you'll really see it but the sculpt always works with the articulation i mean there's some exceptions but not here you know uh, all the paint i have zero slop on my figure even in the smallest crevice there's no slop and that's something that amazes me zolda has a lot of uh or i'm sorry the zolda or torque depending on which version you saw him from uh there's little red lights and blue lights and yellow lights and things all over the place. And they're all painted and they all are flawless. How often do you get that on a figure? You know, like I've heard people say there's no such thing as a perfect action figure. Well, I've got a couple because, you know, I have no issues with these guys. I think that's, you know, the, the, the biggest selling point. Look at the compound uh, lights on his shoulders. Now, I don't know if he's modeled after a camera, and that's what I think it is. He, he's got a lot of camera-looking parts, but um, they spared no expense. The segmented bug-like hands, they got them. Well, in, in the show, I think their hands were black. His hands might have been entirely black. It still looks good, you know what I'm saying, the way that it's rendered there details on the back still look awesome and I got mine in eBay he was used and so this is him after a, a, a prior user you know what I mean a prior owner and he's still in really really good condition I did have to clean one of his legs because it looked like somebody spilled something on him but it was easy to clean him and I brushed all that shit off with a old uh, you know toothbrush and uh, it didn't take off any of the paint so, you know, it's not only well done, but it's just a lot of quality. You know what I mean? It's high quality, good stuff. The paint doesn't chip after years of being out. Um, joints still work the way they're supposed to work. Those shoulder joints are really cool because, you know, it's just extra, you know, uh, freedom for his arm. I mean, you don't really need it because you don't really do too much that you bump into that with, but it works, you know? Um, it's just such a beautiful looking figure all the little details on the belt all the little uh, you know hinges and ball joints and everything it all works well there's no paint rubbing it's just awesome and there's so many different variations of your silvers and your grays and the only thing that i think is is generally the same all across the board is the green used in the basis of uh you know the base of his costume so like his neck his arms you know his waist even the uh, the deck in his belt, the whole nine, it's it's green and it's the same green, pretty close to the same green, all over this guy's body, which is something we never get with our Marvel Legends. They're always giving us three and four different colors, of you know versions of the same color, and it's just like come on. And you know one other thing is you know I mentioned SIC before, but you can see the intricacies of this armor, they harken back to SIC. So you know he's a good place to start if you're getting into this for the first time. Accessories, man. Whew. This dude, most of them, 
come with a whole bunch of accessories. So far, the one with the least accessories has been uh, Kamen Rider Spear or Imperer, I think is his name in Japanese. Um, but Zolda slash Torque comes with a bunch of hands and a bunch of weapon parts. And uh, the only thing I'm missing in mine is his final vent card. Um, I don't know if he came with more than that. I'm assuming he only came with that one, but I think the the uh, SH Figure Arts figures typically come with four cards. So, but uh, the places where you would put the cards is they're all functional. So the belt where the deck goes actually moves. You slide the you know, actually emblem out, and you could put the cards actually in there. Then the same goes for his gun. You pull back on the hammer. You pull the bottom piece out like the clip put the card in the clip holder, and then you can actually close it. And the fact that they somehow worked all those things into the tiny little gun is just amazing. Like, it actually closes, and it actually opens, and the top slides back, just like it does in the show. And that's how he activates his uh, advent cards. And I think that's really cool. It's really different. It's really unique. Most of the riders have very unique ways of activating their, uh, you know, advent decks or advent cards. Um, as I said earlier, this gun is huge. It's the, the, the arms of his contract beast, Magno Giga, and uh, you put them together and it makes this giant gun. It's, uh, I think this is the shoot vent. Um, my only gripe is that these individual pieces, because all of his guns are parts of his contract beast, you can't put those pieces together and make the actual contract beast and you're only like one or two parts away from you know having the whole thing and somehow they just they're like nope you're not gonna be able to do it and it would have been nice if you could you know but it's an impressive freaking uh, weapon right here and you know it looks on model a hundred percent it's exactly what you saw in the show and the movie it's just it's it's a great it's a great piece um his uh, details on his back. So you see those connection points. That's what we call them. Uh, a lot of the riders have them all over their bodies. And on most of the SH Figure Arts versions, a lot of different ones can be removed for one reason or another. The back ones on uh, Zolda, they're no different. You can actually remove them. It's You've got an L and R on the connection points themselves and the holes, you know, above the holes, as you can see here, so you know which one goes where. Uh, this is for another, uh, well, I can't even remember what this vent was, but it's another one of his attacks. I think it was just called a, uh, it's another shoot vent, actually. But anyway, you know, the uh, uh, Giga Bazooka, or whatever they call this, you know, sits on his back, and uh, there you go. It clips right into those holes perfectly and very sound. It, it doesn't really move around much. You can um, rest them. There are like uh, recesses in the bottom portions of the bazookas, and they um, rest perfectly on his shoulders, which I like because it makes it really easy to pose him. You know, if you want to play around a little bit and move him around and, you know, have these on him, they're not going anywhere. And, you know, that's what I mean when I'm talking about great uh, engineering. This guy is engineered to the max and it works. I mean, he's a very technical looking character. Also, there is the little uh, kind of holster mode on his belt. It's kind of a hassle because all the parts are so small, but you know, it's a nice little touch in case you ever want to have him posed like that. This gun is a little technological marvel, all the things it can do. I mean, it really, really trumps the kind of shit that we typically get. And this is for a figure that I paid less than $30 for. So, you know, a lot of times uh, people complain about uh, the difference between import figures and, you know, domestic figures. And when you think about it, in, in, in many cases, if you were buying these things domestically, you wouldn't be paying the same price. And I'll get into that a little bit more. You wouldn't be paying much more, but I'll get into that in a little bit. But anyway, you can pull off the connection point. It leaves a hole. There is a little uh, 
uh, I mean, another connection point that has like a, a little black thing in it, like a peg that's on a ball joint as well. And uh, you kind of stick that all the way in there, you know, make sure it's uh, clipped into place. Then on the actual pistol itself, the magnavisor, you can pull off the little silver thing at the very back, the round silver piece. You got to get your nails under there or get a um, exacto knife or, you know, a uh, screwdriver, you know, Phillips head or something, and you should be good. Um, you pull that out and you see how you have that U-shaped recess. It clips right onto the peg that you have in the first place because that peg, the end that sticks out, is got that U shape to it and it holds on there and it will not move I mean, until you pull it off it's not going anywhere so you know if you want to have like you know a, a moment where your uh, Zolda or Torque has to uh, quickly draw his weapon and you want to pose him in that kind of manner you can do so it's kind of cool that you know they give you options my guy's always going to have it in his hand, unless he's doing something else. I just think he looks better holding it, and if he doesn't have it, it's just going to be, you know, dematerialized or something. Now, the thing to look out for is storing the pegs. You know, these things are small. Um, you can see that they're in scale to the figure. It's not like they made them large so that we can notice them. Um, you need to have a place to put them as well as all the other small parts that come with this figure and you know the figmas are a one up on these guys because they come with their own little baggie that you can put things in revel techs have their own little box um, it's just one of those things you need to be aware of it you need to be prepared so you know go to your hobby store buy a bunch of tiny little ziplock ziploc bags or buy varying sizes of ziploc bags and gather up all your stuff in there because you're going to be kind of pissed off when you realize that there are small parts that you might not have thought you needed that uh, you can't find them when you do end up needing them you know so be prepared do that and uh, you should be good with your um, accessories and like I said guys a ton of accessories Okay, the articulation on this bad boy is pretty wonderful. I mean, if you've seen any of my reviews about SH Figure Arts, you've seen it before. Um, you can look up really well. You have your double barbell and you have the, uh, I'm sorry, barbell and then the head articulation. So it can look up with no problem and emote really well. The left and right action is really simple and it works. Um, the shoulder pads are far away enough that it doesn't interfere with the head articulation. Like I said before, you have the barbell at the base of the neck, the neck, then the barbell at the top, and then the head. So you can emote really well, and the neck adds to that. The arms can move out to the side this much, and the shoulder pads do not restrict it at all. You can actually move the arms all the way up with no problem because the shoulder pads are on the arm itself so they don't restrict the hinge uh, the arms are double jointed at the elbow um, his hand also is uh, it's kind of a hinge and a pin and swivel and hinge also so it can move forward and back or up and down depending on how you twist the hand on the pin um, if you look closely at the uh, kind of in between there's this big ball socket for the shoulders and that's why they can move the way they do and there's no restrictions to that movement you can kind of see the space there's like a little bit of gapping but it's enough that it doesn't interfere with the articulation but it's not enough that it takes away from the sculpt engineering folks this is what I'm always talking about you've got ball socketed uh, or ball jointed I'm sorry uh, diaphragm or, or waist the waist is a similar joint to the neck you have your your upper torso your middle torso and then the base of the torso is where the waist connects to it um, nothing is restricted you would think with a character this bulky he would be restricted like crazy he's not restricted at all and it was weird because like when I got him 
I, I got him around the same time that I got the Marvel Legends three pack with, uh, you know, Warbird in it or Miss Marvel. And I thought that, you know, uh, some of them would be more poseable than him or at least in the same league. You know what I'm saying? As far as posability goes, but I should know better. It's SH figure arts and there's nothing really on the market that's as good as them. You know, Figma comes close. Um, I don't know about D arts. I will know soon. But um, yeah, so as you can see, he's got all the freedom that, you know, a tokusatsu hero should have or a tokusatsu character should have with all the flips and the jumping and the wide-legged stances and all that good stuff. And this guy's a gunner, and he doesn't even do fancy maneuvers, but he's got the freedom of motion that, you know, being an SH Figure Arts figure would afford you, which is awesome. Uh toes point down he's got a ankle swivel um and he's got a uh, toe joint and he has an ankle pivot nothing is, is is restricted on this guy i mean i i can keep on showing you pictures for days but you know it all goes back to what i said nothing is restricted because they engineer the hell out of these guys you can do the whole sickle foot thing so he can kick properly and it looks cool he can chamber his kicks because he's got double jointed knees and he's got the classic SH Figure Arts uh, hips, but these are a little different from the usual SH Figure Arts hips because you can't extend them. You don't need to actually, because the way these are uh, kind of closed off, they allow for more range of motion so that you don't have to worry about, you know, doing all that kind of craziness. I love it. Overall, what you have here is another example of why I keep telling you that Bandai makes the best stuff. <laughs> Hands down, Bandai makes the best stuff. You just it's it's an undisputable, undeniable fact. They make the best stuff. Granted, they don't always make the biggest stuff, but they do make the best stuff. Um Kamen Rider Zolda slash Torque is just a really well done figure. It's another one of the the, the great uh Tokusatsu figures coming from uh, Bandai and SH Figure Arts. His accessory count is awesome. His posability is awesome. The paint and sculpt is just fucking amazing. The fun factor on this figure, if you like Dragon Knight or uh, Ryuki, is just going to be, you know, out the wazoo because you're going to have so much that you can do with him because they made the figure right. Um, he works really well with your Figmas. They're not really very different in uh, size. You know, the Figmas are slightly smaller. But in some cases, as you can see here, they're kind of the same size. And uh, the way that they're, you know, constructed as the, and the fact that the sculpts are so on model, you know, they don't look like two different, uh, you know, uh, companies made them. They still feel kind of, you know, really, really related. And they should, because, I mean, it's based on the same show. But I just mean construction-wise. I mean, if you put them under the microscope, you can find the the differences. You know, the figmas are a little bit more loosely painted. You will find a little bit of uh, slop, or I shouldn't even say slop, but you'll find uneven marks and whatnot on them. But, you know, if you want to collect all 13 riders, you're going to have to make some compromises. And my compromise is to jump back and forth between... Uh, SH Figure Arts and Figmas, wherever I can find a deal. Um, the import thing I was trying to say earlier, depending on, you know, where you buy your figures from, you're, there isn't a big difference between what you pay now here and what we, were, what we pay for some import figures, especially six, five and six inch figures. Um, a lot of the um, American action figure market is full of overpriced, but under engineered and under uh, valued uh, figures you know the marvel legends are not as good as what you're told you know they're overhyped but they're not quality figures you know the paint is not good sculpts are kind of eh. paint is usually shit and you know you're paying almost 30 bucks for them well here's a figure that i did pay almost 30 bucks for and every single thing i told you that's wrong with your American figures, it's right here, and I paid the same price and got it shipped here. So, you know, you just have to look. 
I know people are impatient, and that's the biggest problem, and that's America in a nutshell, but if you're patient, you will find this quality. So this about wraps it up for me. This figure is just all win. Pick it up. You won't be uh, sorry. If you dig Dragon Knight, if you dig Ryuki, this is a must-have. End of story. So I'm Strident. This has been my review of the SH Figure Arts Kamen Rider Zolda, or uh, Torque, depending on which show you've seen. It's an awesome figure. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Um, and I will be here for more reviews, actually, really soon. So uh, thanks for watching. Peace outside.